Hello and welcome to Travel Beans. I'm Emma, this is Alex, and we are digital nomads who have been traveling the world the last seven years. And today we have gone back in time, which is so <laughs> exciting because we've never been back in time before. Hello, Bean Team. I hope you've had a terrible day because we're here to cheer you up. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Today, we are in the town of Ironbridge and it is another wet, windy, disgusting day in England. This trip, we are staying with YHA Ironbridge Coalport, which is a converted factory alongside the River Severn. So the YHA is a charitable organisation that works with young people to provide accommodation and education. We absolutely love working with these guys, not only because they do great work for the youth, but they also have incredibly unique and always very comfortable accommodation. I have managed to get my hands on some very juicy information, don't I? ask how I got it because I'd rather not think about it. But welcome to Ironbridge. Ironbridge is considered the start of the Industrial Revolution here in the UK. This area is a World Heritage Site and behind me is the Iron Bridge. The that, Iron Bridge. The Iron Bridge that this place is named after. And this one here is apparently world famous in the iron world because it was the very first cast iron bridge and I can't believe it's behind me. You can't cross the bridge by car, but you can do it by foot, which is what we're gonna go and do now. Come on. <laughs> As we walk over the bridge, you have this first impression of the town. You have the, the church on the hill and actually a lot of buildings layered up on the hill and all of them are very old and very in keeping with each other. It's a very cute town. Um, I feel that it's definitely more of a real place compared to, for example, when we went to Bybury in the Cotswolds. As some people pointed out, I was pronouncing it Bibri, completely wrong, it's actually Bybury. The River Severn runs through the centre of Ironbridge and is actually the longest river in the UK. I don't know if it's just today or if it's always like this, but it seems like the level of the river is extremely high and the current is really, really fast. Is it always like this? Is it because of the crazy weather recently? Who knows? Maybe one of you do and you're going to leave it in the comments. We walked a bit further along the river and now we can see that it quite clearly is higher than usual. It is. It's gone all the way up this ramp here and is almost at the level of this bench. But you get to sit down and play with ducks. I do, I'm surrounded by ducks. It's not very often in England. I'm gonna see an animal I've never seen. There is a duck that we cannot even possibly describe what it is. I'm a little bit scared of you. I'm a little bit scared. <laughs> it's watching us. It looks like a cross between like a bird of prey and a duck. Oh, like yeah. a like vulture kind of and a duck. A dinosaur's face. Oh, I don't trust it. What are you? It looks like a badass duck to me. It looks like, oh, okay, they're all flocking around now. Oh my God, it's coming over. I'm actually genuinely a little bit scared. It is hench. That is my hench duck. Oh, it's literally <laughs> coming towards us. Oh my goodness. Can we all just stop for a moment and appreciate how British this headline is? Sheep attacks alert. Be warned, guys, be warned. Actually, I do think that I saw recently that like 100,000 sheep were stolen last year in England. What? Yeah, up from 8,000 the year before. Holy crap. It's an epidemic. Oh, see, I read that as sheep attacking people, not people attacking sheep. That's what I'm reading <laughs> yeah, it I don't as, know. like killer sheep. Like, <laughs> they're on the rampage. They've had enough. They're sick of it. They don't want to be lamb anymore. They're on the attack. A little bit further up the road, we have come across the Bedlam Furnaces. As we said earlier by the bridge, the Industrial Revolution really started here in Ironbridge. And you could argue that it actually started here because this is the first furnace that they used where they changed the method of producing iron and they used coke for fuel instead of charcoal. These furnaces were built in the 1750s and used up until the 19th century. I can't believe how close it is to the main road. It is like a living museum, which is quite convenient because that brings us on to our next segment. So let's go back to the car. Today on Alex's wonderful world of British treats, we are gonna try world famous 
pork pies. <laughs> so as you walk in over the bridge, you can see this big sign saying world famous pork pies. Never over my dead body will I see a claim for world famous something and not try it and call them out on it if it's not the best. Now, and luckily for Ellie's of Ironbridge, I actually don't like pork pies. <laughs> <laughs> world famous pork pies. Firstly, I looked online. Nothing. <laughs> Two, world famous doesn't mean in any way that it could be good. It could be famous for being disgusting. For everyone that doesn't know, a pork pie is short crust pastry and it's filled with pork. And this is the bit that I don't like. It's like jelly, like actual, <laughs> actual jelly, right? Meat, yeah, it's porky jelly. On a recent picnic video of ours, lots of people said, where's the pork pie? We were missing a pork pie. Well, the reason is I don't like them, but today I'm willing to try it one more time. I, I do want to like it. I want to like it for my Brits that are watching, my homies. There's just something about, like, I can see the jelly. Why is there jelly? Why? That sounds like something Americans would do with food. <laughs> <laughs> what about taking a bite of just the bottom half without the jelly on the top? I just is don't think just I like even s- like the pork though. And I'm a sausage boy. <laughs> 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 Which means I like pork and sausages. I don't want to take another bite. It's really hard. I mean, I don't know if I'm meant to be poking it. <laughs> it's my food, I can do what I want. Yeah. <laughs> oh no, he doesn't like it, guys. He doesn't like it one bit. Look at him. It's the jelly. And it's so rare for you not to like a pork-based product. It's rare for me to dislike anything. How many times (laughs) on the videos do I dislike food? You're the fussy one. (laughs) Oi. (laughs) Even when I got into the middle bit and tried to avoid the jelly, there's still some jelly sneaking in. Oh, that was gross. (laughs) There are countless, and I mean countless, museums to go and see whilst visiting Ironbridge. We have decided to come to Bliss Hill Victorian Town, which is a living museum where you can come and learn what life was like in the Victorian times. One really cool thing about this place is that it's not like your usual tourist attraction where on the way out you have a gift shop to go and buy all your souvenirs, but actually they're selling souvenirs in all the different shops and they're suitable for that shop type. So for example, right now we're in the foundry and if you look down, they have all these different souvenirs for sale, which are things that they've obviously made here. So yeah, I think it's really cool. I'm really loving this living museum idea. I've never been to a place like this before where you have like real life people in the bakers and in the butchers and uh, in the cafes and they're playing the roles of people at that time. You can interact with them, you can ask them questions, they're super knowledgeable. This is something I think going forward that we should look at more like for living museums and places because I never thought that's something that I really like doing because I've never been a huge museum fan anyway. I prefer to be outside walking around but the living museum you get to get outside walking around but you also get that interaction. So Alex and I just went in the bakery here and there was a woman around the back baking away. She was making shortbread I do believe. Uh, baking in the back so you can ask her about what she's doing and how she's making things and then at the front you have have the woman selling the baked items and she very kindly gave me two ginger nut biscuits in exchange for money. (laughs) I'm not sure if a ginger nut is a worldwide biscuit or if it's just a British biscuit but it's a very delicious biscuit and if you haven't tried said biscuit, (laughs) I've said biscuit so many times, biscuit biscuit biscuit, (laughs) if you haven't had a ginger nut get one and eat one. Oh this one's really soft like an actual cookie. This is how I like my signs. Nice and humble. Not world class, just noted. Very self-deprecating. I wouldn't eat it though because it doesn't say world class. They have the old Victorian classrooms here. And I don't know if any Brits watching, when you were young, I've just had a flashback to school trips where we had to go and dress up like little Victorians. And we go here and they had a really strict teacher and you had to write on slate. Did you have the same experience? 
It's really interesting that Alex just said that because I grew up in the States until I was 12 years old and I remember there very vividly, maybe when I was about 10, we went to a similar thing but obviously it was kind of American style whatever at that time and we had to dress in kind of old style clothes and we had to bring like tin cups and stuff to drink out of and have a little pack lunch and the teacher was really mean and strict and we had to buy on <laughs> weird things like it was exactly the same but in America. So American viewers, did you also have this experience when you were at school? After leaving the Living Museum, we made our way to our final stop on this trip, and that is Wentlock Priory. Now, I was really, really excited about coming here, you guys. If you Google this place, you are going to be presented with photos of ancient ruins that, if you play any video games, it might remind you of certain games like Uncharted or Zelda. However, we were dealt a crushing blow when we found out that it was closed. Very, very sad about this. However, I'm glad we came even though it was closed because the town of Much Wenlock is actually really adorable and I am so happy that I came. I love seeing these towns and villages that are thriving every time we go through them on this trip and I've never heard of them. This town has so many beautiful old buildings. It seems like a really nice place to come and spend the day. You can go and see the ancient ruins and enjoy the day in the high street as well. It seems like a really nice day out. So our time in the Iron Bridge area has come to an end. We're gonna wrap it up. Give us a thumbs up if you like the video. And leave us a comment. When did you go to an attraction and it was closed and it ruined your day? <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that notification bell also to be notified of future bean related content. Some people are walking past me right now, so I refuse to scream what I'm about to scream until they've safely gone by. They were very old. I don't <laughs> want to shock them. They've gone. So till next time, beans out! <laughs>